Hey guys, Mr. Backerberg here. This is part two of lesson 5.4. Three objectives for this video. We're gonna use sum and difference formulas to evaluate trig functions. We're gonna use sum and difference formulas to verify identities. And we're gonna use sum and difference formulas to solve trig equations. We're gonna be using those exact same sum and difference formulas that we saw in part one of lesson 5.4. So in this first example, we've got the tangent of 75 degrees, and a lot like we did on the last video, we're going to break that 75 down into 45 plus 30. Now this is a tangent sum, so we'll be looking at the formula that goes tangent of u plus the tangent of v, all over 1 minus tangent of u times tangent of v. So plugging in our values, we've got the tangent of 45 plus the tangent of 30 all over 1 minus the tangent of 45 times the tangent of 30. Replacing these with some values, the tangent of 45 is 1, and the tangent of 30 ends up being root 3 over 3. On bottom, we're going to go 1 minus tangent of 45 again is 1, and tangent of 30 is root 3 over 3. If we multiply these together, 1 times root 3 over 3 doesn't change anything. So we've got 1 plus root 3 over 3. On bottom, we've got 1 minus root 3 over 3. Now the way this is written right now, I don't really like having these fractions inside of fractions. So on top and bottom, we're gonna multiply everything by three. So on top, three times one is three. And then if we take three times this root three over three, those threes will cancel out and we'll just have that square root of three left over. On bottom, distributing the three, we get three minus root three. Now we're not quite done because we've got a radical in the denominator and we don't typically like to leave those things down there. So we're going to have to do a little bit more multiplying to help us move that up to the top. And since there's a subtraction happening, we're going to have to use a conjugate to multiply. So we're going to have to multiply by 3 plus root 3 on top and bottom. So we're going to have to do a little bit of foiling on top and bottom. On top, if we were to foil this out, 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times root 3 is 3 root 3. We've got another 3 times root 3, so we get 3 root 3 again. And then root 3 times root 3 is just a plain 3. On bottom, if we FOIL this out, 3 times 3 is 9. And then we get plus 3 root 3 and minus 3 root 3. And then we get a negative 3 on the end. So on bottom, we've got some stuff that will cancel out, the 3 root 3 and the negative 3 root 3. On top, I'm going to combine like terms. So 3 plus 9 is 12, and 3 root 3 plus 3 root 3 ends up being 6 root 3. And then on bottom, if we combine like terms, 9 minus 3 is 6. Now I'm going to unadd these fractions. So we've got 12 over 6 plus 6 root 3 over 6. And we can do some reducing there. 12 divided by 6 is 2, and these 6s cancel out, so we get plus root 3. So this right here will be our final answer, two plus root three. In this one, we're looking at the tangent of pi over 12. Remember, we did sine and cosine of pi over 12 in the last video. We broke that down a couple different ways, but the way we did it was pi over four minus pi over six. So if we look at our tangent difference formula, that goes tangent of u minus tangent of v all over one plus tangent of u times tangent of v. So if we plug in our u and our v values, we've got the tangent of pi over 4 minus the tangent of pi over 6 all over 1 plus tangent of pi over 4 times the tangent of pi over 6. Replacing these with some values, the tangent of pi over 4 is 1 minus Tangent of pi over 6 is root 3 over 3. On bottom, this tangent of pi over 4 is just going to be 1. So we get 1 plus 1 times this root 3 over 3 is just root 3 over 3. Then just like the last example, we've got these fractions inside of fractions. So we're going to multiply everything by 3 to start to clean that up. So on top, we get 3 minus root 3. On bottom, we get 3 plus root 3. And since there's addition happening on the bottom, 
when we rationalize this thing, we're gonna have to use our conjugate idea again. So we're gonna multiply by three minus root three on top and on bottom. So we're gonna have to foil these out again. So on top, three times three is nine. Three times negative root three is negative three root three. And three times this negative root three is another negative three root three. And then negative root three times negative root three becomes a positive plane three. If we foil out the bottom, three times three is nine. Three times negative root three is negative three root three. Three times positive root three is plus three root three. And then root three times negative root three gives us negative three. Combining like terms, we can cancel out those middle terms on bottom. On top, nine plus three is 12. And then we get minus six root three. On bottom, nine minus three is six. And again, unadding our fractions, we've got 12 over six minus six root three over six. So we can simplify this down just a little bit further. 12 divided by six is two. These sixes cancel out, so we get two minus root three as our final answer. Our next couple examples are gonna look just a little bit different. Instead of evaluating using our formulas, we're gonna do a little bit of simplifying. So on this one, we've got cosine of theta minus three pi over two. I see a cosine difference. So this one is cosine of u, cosine of v, plus sine of u, sine of v. So if we plug in our values, we've got the cosine of theta times the cosine of three pi over two, plus sine of theta times the sine of three pi over two. Now we can evaluate our unit circle at three pi over two. Uh, this cosine of theta is just going to have to stay there though since we don't know what theta is. Cosine of three pi over two is zero. Plus, if we do this sine of theta, that's gotta stay the same. And the sine of three pi over two is negative one. Now looking at this, since we're taking zero times the cosine of theta, that's just gonna cancel out since multiplying anything by zero just gives us zero. And taking sine times negative one, we're gonna get negative sine of theta. That's all the further we can simplify it down, so that's our final answer. You can pause the video and try this one out on your own, otherwise just follow along with me. I see a tangent sum, so our formula goes tangent of u plus tangent of v all over one minus tangent of u times the tangent of v. So if we start plugging in some values, the tangent of u becomes tangent of theta, then plus tangent of three pi all over one minus tangent of theta times the tangent of three pi. Now checking out our unit circle, three pi, it's like making one and a half trips around and the tangent there is zero. So both of these tangent of three pi's become zero. So if we look on top, if we take tangent of theta plus zero, we just get the tangent of theta. On bottom, this multiplication is gonna cancel out since multiplying anything by zero becomes zero. So we get just one, and tangent of theta divided by one is just the tangent of theta. Next example, we're doing a sine sum. So if we look at our formula, that's the one that goes sine of u cosine of v plus cosine of u sine of v but instead of being given angles to look at, we're actually given some of the values. And that's a little bit helpful, like we know what this sine of u value is, that's 3 fifths. We also know that our cosine of v is 5 over 13, plus I guess we don't know what the cosine of u is yet, and we don't know what the sine of v is yet. But here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna draw out a couple of triangles. u and v each represent separate angles, so we're gonna draw out a separate triangle for each one. So looking at angle u first, well we know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so we know the opposite side is three, the hypotenuse is five. Using some Pythagorean theorem, we could figure out that that other side is four. If we build a triangle for angle v, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so we've got five and 13. Again, Pythagorean theorem, we can figure out that the other missing side is 12. And now we can finish this formula. The cosine of u would have to be four fifths, and the sine of v would have to be 12 thirteenths. 
Now doing a little bit of multiplication, three times five is 15, and five times 13 is 65. On the other side, four times 12 is 48, and five times 13 is 65 again. Combining our fractions, we end up with 63 over 65 as our final answer. Last example for this video, we're gonna use our formulas to help us solve this equation. We've got the sine of x plus pi over four, and we're gonna add on the sine of x minus pi over four, and we're told that's equal to negative one. We're looking for the solutions on the interval from zero to two pi. Now we're actually gonna to have to use two formulas. So if we look at this first piece, it's a sine sum formula. So we're gonna go sine of the first angle, cosine of the second angle, plus cosine of the first angle, sine of the second angle, plus, if we look at this second piece, it's a sine difference formula. So we're gonna go sine of the first angle, cosine of the second angle, minus cosine of the first angle, need a little bit more room here, sine of the second angle, and then we're told that's equal to negative one. Now if we look, there will be some things that we can cancel out. Right here we've got cosine of x sine of pi over four, and over here we've got negative cosine of x sine of pi over four, so those are gonna cancel each other out. These other things are like terms, sine of x cosine of pi over four, so we can add those together. So we've got two sine of x cosine of pi over four equals negative one. Now cosine of pi over four we can evaluate because that's on our unit circle. That is the square root of two over two and that's equal to negative one still. Now if you look at what's going on, this times two and this divided by two will cancel each other out. I'm actually gonna move this root two out in front. So we've got root two times the sine of x equals negative one. Then if we divide this square root of two over to the other side, we get the sine of x equals, we'll have to rationalize this thing, negative root two over two. And then just like our last section, 5.3, if we rewrite this one as an inverse, it's the inverse sine of negative root two over two. We're looking for where on the unit circle does this happen. Since it's a negative sine value, we're looking in the second quadrant. I see the angle five pi over four. I also see the angle seven pi over four. We are not going to add anything extra to this one since it told us to stay between zero and two pi. So these right here are going to be our final answers. That's gonna be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.